I think we all want to be people God can do things through. I think we all want to be conduits in which God has things flow to us, to flow through us, to help get His hope, His peace, His love, His strength, His wisdom, and yes, His resources to others. I think we all want that. But if we were 100% honest with one another, I think many of us don't think that's a lifestyle we could live. It's more like a, a pipe dream that we can fantasize about. See, uh, the term pipe dream uh, talks about having something be unattainable or unrealistic, that it's a fantasy hope or dream. It's, it's an unattainable, unrealistic plan. In fact, the uh, pipe dream, uh, the phrase pipe dream came from, uh, began in 1870s. Uh, actually, it would be reference to people who uh, would see hallucinations or have weird encounters because they were smoking opium. Yeah, I do think it's uh, true that some people might think you're on drugs. If you think you can be somebody, God could do things through. But I'm here to tell you that it is more than a pipe dream. It is not something just to fantasize about. It is something that is realistic and attainable to be a person God can do things through. To be a conduit for God is attainable. It is realistic. You can do it. And you don't even need to have a lot to be able to do it. That's the great thing. I'll show you in just a little bit how that works. But why not let Jesus show us how this idea of being a conduit, being a person God can do things through, how about Jesus show us what that looks like? You know, in Jesus' day, he was uh, near his death. He went to uh, Jerusalem for the beginning of Passover, like all Jewish men would. And as he was there, the religious leaders set out spies to catch every word Jesus said and to catch every place Jesus went. You see, they were trying to trap Jesus to get him to say something that would, would cause the, him to be arrested, that he could get uh, arrested for what he said or what he did. So a few of the religious leaders came up with a scenario that they think, this is perfect. This is the scenario. Let's ask Jesus if paying taxes is something that they're supposed to do. Because they figured that if Jesus um, said, yes, you need to pay taxes to Rome, then there would be zealot Jewish men who would be upset enough with what Jesus said to possibly take him out for them. Or if Jesus said, no, you don't have to pay taxes, well, then they could actually go to the Roman governor they could actually go to Pilate and say, Pilate, he's telling them not to pay taxes. And it would be something that could be viewed as a, a reason for Jesus to be arrested. So when they ask Jesus, should they pay taxes? I think Jesus's response is simple and yet powerful. It's found in Luke chapter 20, verses 24 and 25. It says this, Show me a Roman coin whose picture and title are stamped on it? Caesar's, they replied. Well then, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. See how that is a simple answer, yet a powerful answer from Jesus. Jesus was saying that coin is stamped Caesar's face on it. That coin has Caesar's name on it. And because it is stamped with Caesar's uh, image and it is stamped with Caesar's name, you give that coin to Caesar. But whatever is stamped with the image of God, whatever is stamped with the name of God, that you're to give to God. It makes us wonder and ask a question, what is God's? What is stamped with the image of God? What is stamped with the name of God? That's right, you and me. We are all stamped with the image of God. The Bible tells us we are created in the image of God. God created male and female in the image of God. And so what Jesus was saying there wasn't just, yes, pay your taxes. Jesus was saying that just as you give the coin to Caesar, you must give your life to God. 
because you are God's. Can you see how powerful and incredible that's, that is? And, and the reality is that's why we can be a conduit. That's why we can be a person God can do things through because we're made in the image of God and we are His anyways. In fact, if we were to be like a shirt and have a label on us that people could go around and see, that they could go and, and look at the back of our shirt, what would that label say? I'm going to tell you right now what it would say. It'd say His. The label on you is His. You are God's. You are His. You are stamped with His image and His name. And so we must know, just as, a, as Caesar, uh, the, the paying taxes give the coin that is stamped with Caesar, give it back to Caesar, so we are to give back our lives to God. And I think Jesus gave a great example beyond this. Just uh, either that same day or the next day, He's in, in, in the temple and He encounters a widow who gives, I think, the best example of how this idea of being a conduit, being a person God can do it through, is more than a pipe dream. That it is attainable and it is realistic. That this widow, not the widow we looked at last week who is Elijah's help and being his channel to, to provide for him, but a different widow, that Jesus encounters as they are giving offering uh, there in Jerusalem at the temple. So I'm going to read to you that story, it's just the very next chapter over, uh, Luke 21. It says this, When Jesus was in the temple, he watched the rich people dropping their gifts in the collection box. Then a poor widow came by and dropped in two small coins. I tell you the truth, Jesus said, this poor widow has given more than all the rest of them. For they have given a tiny part of their surplus, but she, poor as she is, has given everything she has. That widow gave two mites, two small coins. These rich that were going before her and after her were giving coin after coin after coin. Why would Jesus recognize hers as the example of the kind of giving that God wants us to have, the, the example of being a conduit that God can do things through? It was because the rich, they dropped the coins in so everyone could hear them. They showed off, look what I'm doing, where this widow gratefully and humbly brought her two coins and put them there in the offering. The rich, it, the rich wanted to be noticed. She didn't want to be noticed. The rich gave some of what they had. She gave all of what she had. And that right there, the example of her giving all she had, however small it looked, is a great, a great example for then how Jesus would do the same. Jesus gave all he had his life on the cross for you and me so he could be the ultimate conduit in which salvation passed through him to us. And if a widow can give just two small coins and be known as a true conduit for God, you and I can be a true conduit for God as well. If anything, be a conduit of helping Jesus get the message of the good news to others. Let it pass to you and then through you and share it with others. But I'm here to tell you that we are called to do more than just bring hope, more than just bring love, more than just bring uh, wisdom, more than just bring strength from God to us, through us, to others. He does want us to take our resources. He does want us to give, even if we only have two mites like the widow, to give what we have to others to meet the need that they have. He'll meet your need. And then he'll use you to meet the needs of others. God is incredible like that. And so I want you to know that the idea of being a conduit, being a person God can do things through, is not just an unrealistic, unattainable pipe dream. But it is something more than a pipe dream. It is something worth seeking and journeying through life to truly understand and become. And through the six weeks, I hope you've learned that it is hard work, that it is a difficult road, that you've learned that it has ups and downs, that, it, that we can get out of the rut and we can get into the groove of generosity and that we can be the channel which God flows things through. And when we do that, we'll see how this isn't just a pipe dream. It's more than a pipe dream. It's a ton of fun and it is exactly how God gets what He has for you and others 
to you and others by getting it through you to go to others. I really pray and hope that what you take from this six week study and series is that you will look at your life and say, God, how am I being a conduit for you? How am I being a person you can do things through? And then say, God, I wanna be more of a conduit. I wanna be more of a person that is allowing you to give to me what I can give to others. Because I don't give to get. I get to give. Thanks, New Life, for being part of this journey with me through this series. And thank you for everyone else who's been a part of this. May you leave this study and this series knowing that you can be a person God can do things through. That you truly can be God's conduit.